And here we are back again. CCA East Playoffs winner's bracket. Going to be the St. Clair Saints taking on Barrett University. St. Clair coming off two very close breakneck five-game series against Kennesaw and then Valley Field. So very, very strong start to their winner's bracket run. But now they face a test of Barrett University, who did 3-0 them during the regular season. So St. Clair definitely has to bring their lunch today if they want to uh, try to uh, speak this one out and continue their run here. I mean, with the way this tournament's been going already, or these playoffs have been going, you're going to need, like, multiple lunches, maybe a couple snacks here and there. <laughs> And maybe like an after hours party yeah. or something like that because my goodness they, with how long these games have been going already they've definitely got their works cut out for them yeah see that's the thing with these long tournaments even if you like say you make a decent run but if you go game five game five game five game five you're playing a lot of rocket league in a short time period and even for the kings of game five that can cause a little bit of burnout and just maybe the mechanics can get a little bit off here and there you, you know you get a little complacent here but st Clair, they have seemed to elevate as both series have gone on so even if they have a really really slow start here you do not want to push it to game five every time because eventually somebody will probably end up getting you but just try to start off and have a little more consistent pressure in the first couple games here and Try to get out ahead of yourself this time instead of playing the Absolutely. You're going to get yourself a little exhausted if you go on like that. Like, I don't care. As much as you may love, whether it be a sport or an e-sport, whatever it may, it may be, if you are if you might love hockey, but if you play it for like three hours, you're probably going to be crawling on the ice at some point, yeah. right? And I mean, sure, basically e-sports is not necessarily there, but it is still absolutely exhausting to the point where it becomes physical. Yeah, so yeah, you know, the, the, the mental toll takes, it starts to wear down the body as well, so. Ventrix is going to get the demo on Nitrix, say nothing, a uh, whole lot of nothing, first two minutes, couple chances here and there for both teams, but nothing of uh, nothing of quality so far, just a little back and forth, ping pong, a little volleyball through the middle, decent little crack there from, uh, Kit, didn't catch the name there, from the side of Bear University Spoods. Trying to break this one out, Nitrix is going to launch there to play, it looks like Ventura is going to try to play that one. Now Comp is going to be there, or Ventrix rather than Ventura, Comp is going to be there for the save. Now Spoods, trying to set something up, it looks like NA going to try to find something, but this ball just kind of ricocheting around in front of the Saints net, and there's still a whole lot of nothing for the first two minutes. You had me excited there for a second, I thought you said Ventura, which I didn't think of, like, Ace Ventura. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm making sure my age. That's a no, it's the first thing, the first thing that follows. <laughs> I got excited for a second, but of course we do have Nate, and that's corrupt on the side of Barry University as well. Going to take the field for them in a very, very quiet half, looking for the icebreaker of sorts here in this first game. And oddly enough, if we do end up finding whoever wins this one, does go up against our St. Clair Saints green team. Part of the green team is actually 100% here though, because I know they were having a lot of bit of troubles earlier. So um, either way, we could very well see. Some Saints in the winner's bracket moving forward. But as to how, we'll see when we get there. <laughs> yeah, I'd say an adventure scores, I'm still going to yell laces out, even though it's, I know it's not been yes. terrible, but it's like, oh, I'm going to be there for the save. Saints, a couple shots on net there for Bear University so far. Saints don't really have, I don't think, maybe one shot on net so far, but it's just been a lot of mid play for both teams, a lot of neutral zone. 50s, challenges, nothing really uh, coming through for either side. Gonna try to get the breakout. Ventrix gonna try to find something. Gonna try to get the clear. We'll get a great little chip toward the corner, but able to find them. But Corrupt is gonna be there for the demo on Nitrix. Now N8 gonna try to find something. I guess his name is probably Nate. I'm saying N8, but I'm guessing it's probably Nate, so we're gonna go with that. Corrupt is gonna try to look to play this one over mid. Ventrix is gonna be there. Gonna knock, knock at the touch on the ball. And Corrupt's okay. gonna be there for the follow. So maybe a, we'll call that a calculated fake in midair. And Corrupt gonna be there. And one nothing Barry to start off game one. Yeah, you absolutely put calculated in the yeah. chat for that one. <laughs> yeah. A beautiful shot was able to tuck it in right underneath the crossbar. No Saints in sight. So Barry going to get the icebreaker and get this first goal with a minute 30 left in the first game. Yeah, see, this game's gone on pretty quick. There's three and a half minutes, and there wasn't a whole lot of offense going on. A couple shots on both sides, but say Krupp able to break the tie there. Now, Comp going to misplay the ball on the wall, actually, so maybe Barry gets a little cracked, and Nitrix going to not win the 50 either, so Barry going to have a couple members. They're going to have man advantage. The ball is going to get taken <laughs> away from Spooge in the front, but he will find some way to recover. 50 will be won by Venture, so Krupp trying to find something off the ceiling, unable to do so, and now Spooge going to try to find this breakout and just try to get St. Clair an offensive attempt. They haven't even pushed this ball out of the zone in what seems like over a minute. I was going to say, up until that 1 minute 30 mark, I could have sworn that both teams maybe had one shot at the key. It was just that quiet. Where does he spooze? Wow. Holy smokes, what a move! He just makes the sharp right stick, and we have ourselves a tie game. Spooze going turbo swerving toward the side of the net. They're just going to cut through all three defenders, oh. weaving perfectly through two defenders, just right through the line, and then 
burying that one in the corner. Just what a goal. Spoots' dribbling today has been on point. This guy seems like he cannot miss in front of the net. And St. Clair, you will definitely take that one. And now, kickoff. Is going to go back comp. Going to win the 50 there. We'll get double touched off the ceiling. Spoots almost find the back of it again. And now St. Clair putting some offensive chances together. I mean, I know I like to call. Oh, hang on a second. Shot on target. And comp is going to find another one. His third shot is going to stick after Nitrix does a little bit of bank off the backboard. Finds Corrupt. And comp is right there ready and waiting no very university players in sight and what was originally <laughs> a saints deficit is now a saints one up in the league and it was originally three and a half minutes of no goals has now become three goals in just over a minute and a half so how quickly things can change in this game and st Clair on the on the positive end of things so far still a lot of time to play in rocket league terms for barry so a lot of time to try to find a barrier this goal, but not a whole lot of chances from both teams. So when chances are hard to come by, you have to make sure you capitalize. St. Clair doing so just a little better so far. And now, going to try to play this clock. Spoots is going to get demo Nitrix. Not going to be able to get the 50 in the side of Barry. Now Comp going to try to play this 50. Great little touch by Ventrix. It's the ball of will be there for Nate. Fantastic play by Ventrix and Nate. They're going to hook up. And now Barry going to hook up that 2-2 lead just 11 seconds ago. Okay, perfect time for Nate to show up here. Of course, a one-on-one -on -one there with Nitrix, able to find the spot that it was not going towards. And holy smokes, we have ourselves yet another tie game leading more towards an overtime with 10 seconds left to go. More overtime and more game fives. So who would have guessed it between this, uh, for the Saints cold squad here? Although Nate going to try to have other ideas. Barry going to get a really decent crack with Spoof. Maybe he, he can win this 50, but Barry is going to play that one off the ceiling. Nitrix maybe trying to get this one to touch the ground because they're not going to love where the yeah, ball okay. is right now. Yeah, he just trying to bury that one, spike that down. Going to go into overtime for game one. St. Clair versus Barry University. Now, Ventrix going to take the kickoff. Nitrix will be on the receive again. Maybe he set something up here. Going to get challenged in the defensive end, though, and Barry going to try to stop the Saints breakout. A rebound though, Spoods was looking for, but Ventrix is going to be right there to at least get some sort of interference on that initial shot. Spoods looks like he was going to make the shot for himself, but it actually just hands it off over to Comp. Pass was stopped, however, still kind of stuck in the corner. This could now be Barron University's opportunity to maybe find themselves the game winner. Never mind, Spoods is just going to absolutely demo Ventrix, would have been the one to take the shot and forces Barry back to the drawing board. Yeah, Nitrix almost accidentally teed that one up for I believe it was Ventrix there. So that demo coming through huge. Comp could get another demo. So St. Clair trying to throw the weight around a little bit this game, getting a couple demos in OT especially. Ooh. Great shot there. Comp going to come down and take that one off the post. And now going to try to break this one out over the mid. Corrupt is going to get a touch there. Nitrix is going to be there for the follow. Well, we'll get knocked up into the corner. Nitrix will be there once again, but great challenge by Ventrix. Going to knock that one away. And now Comp, maybe find something in the individual effort. Going to get the flip, trying to find the shot on net. Will do so, but able to find the back of the net and just really, really good back and forth in OT. Both these teams just trying to break through. I love that Comp decided to slow down that shot. Mm -hmm. Barry was so used to just constantly finding one-timers that it actually did nearly throw him off. Thankfully, the last line of defense was able to make the save, but love the little mind games that you do occasionally see out of these players, especially at a high level. Oh, Nate gonna have a decent crack at the net there. Comp is gonna be there to deny it though. Now, St. Clair still gotta get this one out. Spoof gonna be there for the play over mid. Great little trip to Comp, didn't get a whole lot on the ball there, but Spoots will be able to go for the 50 in the corner. Ball will fly back to Comp near mid, great little flip, but can be taken back across the line by Corrupt. Ball will just hang around mid, so now both teams just trying to break that defensive stalemate over mid. Ball will end up in the Saints zone though. Ventures gonna win the challenge over Comp, gonna get a second touch on the ball. Luckily, or luckily for the Saints, I'm able to follow up. Ball just going a little bit too fast there to get a good pass in. Now St. Clair gonna try to counter attack. Now one thing that could very well become a problem the longer this game goes on is that uh, Barry University, they are completely fresh right now. This is the first game they've had to play in this playoffs. Meanwhile, the Saints, like we were talking about earlier, they had two game fives. Yeah. <laughs> if there is any sort of way to provoke exhaustion, it's a really drawn out overtime. So <laughs> this is just the more and more, the longer the longer this goes on, I feel like it's worse for the Saints, but still I want to see if they can pull it off here in game one. And I feel like the longer OT goes in Rock League, usually just like the worse the goal is going to get that one team just finds some way You just way lose to get... it at some point. Yeah, exactly. Some team's just going to throw their hands up and say, we just got nothing left for this ball. It's going to be bouncing around the goal line, off the post, off the crossbar. And say both teams going to look for something easy on this counterattack. It's just a little back and forth right now. Barry going to try to get the break. Oh, Comp going to try to go for the challenge Okay. Here. Pretty good job. Going to try to set that one up. But Nate will be back there. Going to chip it back over to Spoot in the safe zone. Spoot's not going to get a whole lot of it. Nitrix going to miss it as well. So three Saints going to go for the ball there. Luckily, they're going to turn that one away. And they will get time to reset. But always scary to see a triple commit on the net there. Oh, absolutely. At least not everybody was flipping at it the exact same yeah. moment, though. Because otherwise, that could have been scary if the bounce went awry. But we are basically a game and a half into this one already as we now have
past three minutes of overtime. Um, right there, we're looking for the save. Sure enough, I think that was Corrupt coming in hot to make that shot in this extremely close scenario once again. Pop fly ball, though. Comp is up on the skies. Oh, good interference there from Ventrix. Every single ball from both sides, just every 50 and every challenge, just nobody can get the ball past the walls. Great shot fire by Barry. Corrupt with a great twist and finish. And now Barry going to take game one. Three and a half minutes into a game one overtime, but Barry finally breaks through and takes a 1-0 lead against St. Clair in the series. Yeah, Spoods was in net, but he was in the midst of recovery, and there was no other Saints there to back him up in this scenario. So game one. Going over to Barry and just exhausting the Saints again. I'm going to probably bring this up again later as the series goes on here. But the more and more this goes, it's just going to be that much more painful here for the Saints. And in true Saints fashion, not going to take a break, it looks like. They're just going to fire away here into the next game. Yeah, and I mean, the way they came back the last couple series, I think they just want to get back in there and just, I think they just want to get to game five, to be honest with you. Obviously, they want to try to close it out before that, but I think if you're saying clear, they're just like, listen, we want to get later in the series. We feel like we can kind of wear people down over a five-game series, but... Really, really good close back and forth there. Either team could have taken game one. So now, St. Clair, once again, one nothing deficit in the series. They've been here, done that tonight at least so far. So it's going to see what they have in game two. But Nate in game two going to start things off with an incredible solo effort off the kickoff. Air dribble to the backboard and double tap that one in the top of the net. And just a great job, perfectly executed off the kickoff. Both members of the Saints just splits the uprights there. Oh, the one opportunity, though, there for Barry that I was hoping that they wouldn't capitalize on. I didn't even say anything because I didn't want a commentator's <laughs> curse it. But usually after a long, drawn-out overtime, the first couple seconds going into game two is like a massive feels bad man yeah. kind of moment. You're like, you're still kind of drained out. And the fact that the Saints don't opt for, like, breathers or any sort of timeouts makes things that wow. much worse. And it just snowballs to scenarios like this where Ventrix is then going to put a little bit of insurance here, just taking it practically off of Spoods and Comp's bumpers. This great job by Ventrix, great control, great pace there, off the backboard, double touch off the ground, pinch that ball in between two defenders, and Barry with two excellent goals, just nice and clean so far to start things off, and we're only 23 seconds into this one, so St. Clair, a lot of time to climb this hill, but if you're Barry, you try to keep that foot on the gas and keep that pressure going. Yeah, absolutely. You, like, your head get more ahead, but they nearly give one up there. A very solid opportunity there for Comp, but a good save there from Ventures too. They just pretty much wait for the last possible second to make that save. Or extra dramatic flair, I suppose. Yeah. But uh, Nitrix does have Comp alongside him. Comp looks to maybe be the setter of sorts, waiting for someone to spike it down, but it's going to be Ventrix who meets him there instead. Yeah, Spoon's going to play this one over the net. Got a little bit of boost to play with here to get this dribble going. Now going to run out of boost. Going to try to send this ball over to it. Looks like Comp in midair. Comp maybe gets a double oh. touch. Just unable to find the nose there. Nitrix is there for the follow. Well, maybe he can find something, but two members of Barry going to be there for the shutdown. And now Spoon's he's a little crack on the ground there. Demo will come through. Actually, it won't. Ventrix going to get away just in time there. Maybe a little last second jump there to avoid the Spoon's demo and St. Clair. Back in the defensive end now. Gonna, uh, looks like it'll be Nitrix on the breakout. Going to get a great little flip there, but... Unfortunately, no members of the Saints able to follow in the middle. Great little fake there by Nate. <laughs> the stop and go there, send the Saint member flying. Yeah, just, just stopping wow. the tempo and just completely changing it is such a good move. Just throw things off every once in a while. But now Comp, he just threaded the needle between both of them, and we have ourselves a one goal game. And that's the only problem. And I don't want to say you're caught ball watching, but when double commit over the net there, and then you, you challenge that 50 above midfield, by the way. So that was extremely risky from Barry. And maybe that's the 2 nothing lead saying, hey, we can maybe take a chance here and try to find the third goal shorthanded. But St. Clair, we already seen them capitalize on that counterattack multiple times tonight. And Comp, once again, able to find the free goal and exactly what St. Clair wants to get back in this. And giving Comp the goal, of course, also has the opportunity to just flare up everybody yeah. on the side of the Saints, because I do not know what it is, but every time Comp gets the goal, everybody goes absolutely nuts. For good reason, fair enough. Yeah. But I know we've not seen, like, the fancy kind of stuff tonight, which, to be fair, like, this is a tough competition, so you go for what you know what works. But if you give Comp the slightest of inches, you know he's going to try to push it really hard, but actually at the same time, so is Nate going to find the second goal of the game. Just slows it down once again, waits for his opportunity, and just snipes it. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe Spoots had a little bit of lack of boost there and also had to kind of judge where Nate was going to throw the ball. Could have went to the left there and slid that one in. Could have went top right to Spoots. Kind of in a tough spot there. Had to try to make a judgment call. Unable to do so in time. Really, really good shot by Nate. And 
Barry gonna win this kickoff as well. Ventrix gonna try to get the breakup, but Nitrix did get the demo to release, so maybe the Saints get a 2v1 and comp. Gonna get the air dribble, gonna try to find the touch. He got and it! He will hammer it home! Gonna body bag Nate on the goal line. Save doesn't matter. And St. Clair gonna draw this one with him back into one. All right, this is what I'm talking about. Flared up, and now he's making the plays that we know he can. Whether he has to brute force it or what. Keeps it within one, still within reach. Still have half the game to go. But Barry's still looking pretty solid. Just two very unusual flukes so far in regards to their defense. Ten oh my gosh. Speaking of defense, defense totally optional this game apparently. Both teams now just going shot for shot, blow for blow here. Just back and forth. Foods didn't get quite enough of that ball. All the Saints rotating in front of the net there. And then Ventrix there to just pick up the pieces. Doesn't get much. We've seen so many goals. We've seen the goals where it couldn't look any more difficult mechanically and the ones where it couldn't be any more free. We've seen every spectrum of gold this game and St. Clair just on the negative end of that though. Down four to two right now still. So they took game one though, so still got a lot to play with here. Absolutely here and now. Like, there's just nothing worse to say the least. Yeah. Where you're feeling good, you just got a goal and it literally just like gets turned over. Yeah. Like, it hurts to say the least. Like, Definitely tough to try and come back from. You still got plenty of time to try and make something happen. That's where you definitely need to rely on your teamwork rather than solo abilities to say the least. But Smooth is going to look to try and get something started. Wow. And you know what? Just send it, and I guess it works. I guess if Barry is going to play this aggressive, they're going to play so heavily on that front foot. The second you get a counterattack and get that ball going, I mean, no one's been home for it both times. Corrupt just not there to get, like, not able to get there in time. And once again, back and forth, both teams go defense, just non-existent so far in St. Clair. Just needs one goal to close this gap, but you cannot let Barry get this one back quickly again. You can't let him do it two, three, four times in the same game. You have to find you have to find some way to score two in a row at some point in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Any sort of answer here from Barry is just going to, I feel like, put the icing on the cake here for this second game here. And a huge passing play. The hat trick from Ventrix could not come at a more stylish way to Nate with a fantastic centering pass and a one-timer just seals the deal dead center three goals for him and a two goal lead once again here for Barry yeah perfect give it going really good job there to angle that ball toward the middle slash left side of the net because he knew the right side was probably gonna get cut off by the Saints goaltender and once again Barry gonna come steaming down the offensive end gonna try to find another shot comp is gonna be there for the clear but Barry just so heavy on this front foot this game in the Saints they have found answers for it, like but unfortunately Barry is just able to counterattack so well and just come back and get those goals and Comp is going to try to find something over the net there. Nice, just trying to find the setup. And now, see, even though the back and forth was amazing, the clock has still been draining a little bit. So now only a minute 20 left. And Nate trying to find an amazing goal, but will get shut down on the reset there by Spoons. Yeah, apparently all the players in this game have just learned themselves the ability no guard, where they have additional <laughs> full, style. Off, full offense stats at the cost of having absolutely no defense. Because that is just basically shot after shot with like complete disregard for defense. So we see another opportunity off oh. the post, but I guess if there's one player who isn't going to uh, care about what you think, it would be player number four, the most. Yeah, and that was <laughs> such a good angle by Comp. We put that in the one spot that there's no members of Barry that could possibly get there. Now Barry, good little crack back the other way of their own. So both teams got a lot of near chances here and only 38 seconds also. St. Clair, got to get this ball got to get this ball back into Barry's end and keep them off the, out of this offensive zone. Once again, they're going to get a little crack crop. Going to try to figure out something. Going to get the demo through on Spoon. So now 3v2 Comp with a great touch there toward the net, but should be playable by Nate. And once again, it's going to get the demo, but still, time not on St. Clair's side. Will they find this goal, though? Got to try to find it quick. I mean, that demo was clutch, but unfortunately there was no shot to really follow it up. It's going to make things a little bit awkward for his next couple seconds unless an additional touch can come through. We see Spoon attempted to make the shot, was close, but could not get past the defense. Comp, one more time, has Nitrix here. The actual the lift here from wow. Nitrix almost set that up perfectly, but again, the defense here from Barry is just going to make things too dang difficult as the ball nearly touches the ground, hits it with ground one more time. We are done here for game number two, and sure enough, that is going to be curtains, so... Dejan Fu once again here to a possible Saints reverse sweep or else this could be a trip to the lower bracket. Yeah, so you're saying there's a chance. St. Clair definitely sitting in the back <laughs> now. Down 2-0 again, but they have a long way to go to climb this hill. And looks at Barry, 3-0'd them in the regular season, so we knew this team came out to play. And say losing that game on overtime definitely had to hurt St. Clair a little bit. But look at, they outshot them 11-9 to too. Just St. Clair, they got so many shots at like that back half of the game, but... Just that defensive Barry holding up, just denying comp, denying Spoods right at the goal line several times. And St. Clair 
You just you got to find some way to score a goal and not give it right back in the next 20 seconds. I think every time they scored, Barry answered within 20 seconds. Absolutely. And just the opportunities that the side of Barry were even getting for themselves. Like, sure, there was a good amount of shots initially, but there were so many, like, well-executed passing plays mixed in with those extra yeah. shots, too, that sure, they may have been a little bit lower down on the shot count, but they were such good shots that... Uh, you just can't stop them. Yeah, and that can be a little bit demoralizing when you feel like you've done everything perfectly to set up a shot and then someone just turns it away. Oh a my goodness. Fantastic bump by Ventrix at the goal line. Gonna get the follow through off his great shot off the wall, but just look at such a good job. Jump into the back of Spoods and get the second touch there. Spoods, nothing he can do besides watch. Nitrix as well and Barry jumping out in front of St. Clair immediately in game three. I mean, there's certain plays where you just don't expect anything to happen. I think if you're at Spoods in that spot, you think you have that play blocked. Yeah. Like, you're not expecting anything to be made out of that. But Ventrix just absolutely never say die. Going to push his way through and make that play. Getting the Icebreaker here in game number three. Of course, match point up against Saints. They need something quickly. I mean, say it time and time again, it's especially as of late, considering the amount of game fives we've been seeing. But putting you in, putting yourself in these high pressure scenarios after a reverse sweep over and over again. That's a terrible way to try and be consistent. But we see Comp looking for the shot, but actually, maybe got a little fancy with it. I was going to say, maybe the flip reset was a little bit too much. They're just going to put it over the crossbar. Might have at least had a shot at the net if otherwise, but Barry, going to get that spike down in the same zone. Nitrix going to try to find something unable to make contact, though. Corrupt, going to double commit there with uh, Ventrix. Going to try to play this one off the walls, Foods. Going to be waiting in the wings, trying to get ready to play this one off the ceiling. Will win the 50 there. Great pitch back toward mid. No Saints able to follow, at least for the time being. Comp going to try to get the challenge on Ventrix. Will get the bump, but Ventrix is going to send that ball toward the corner. Going to get a second touch as well, so Barry just swarming the Saints on defense. They can't get, out, get this ball out, regardless of what they're trying to do. Yeah, we're going to right back into the Saints zone, looks like. Hang on a second. Spoons going to pick it up for the moment. Shot would have been on target if not for Ventrix. Nitrix now still trying to put in there, though. Comp just up in the skies, just looking for his opportunity to break out once again, but Barry University just not giving to him. A very awkward bounce, actually. He's going to put the pressure right back into the Saints crease. But thankfully, there was no third player trying to take the shot at the time. Yeah, Barry just seems like they do such a good job of swarming the Saints on the back line. And the ball was popped up long enough. You knew something bad was probably going to come of it. And Nate and Corrupt going to hook up. Or actually, yeah, Ventrix going to go off the wall there. And Nate going to be there for the finish. Spoods just trying to get that reset out of the net. Trying to drive out. Not able to get there in time. And once again, two Saints just look helpless in the net. And Barry now increasing this lead to 2-0 with two minutes left. Or two minutes played in game three. And still have a little bit of time to try and make this one come back here. But as of right now, Barry is putting themselves in a fantastic position to do exactly what they did during the regular season and score themselves that 3-0 sweep. Just maybe need a little bit more oh, offense. And sure enough, who else to do it but Ventrix going to find himself a second goal. Of course, had a hat trick, I think, a game ago as well. And it's just absolutely on a roll here with the rest of the Barry University squad. Yeah, when I saw two members of the Saints bump each other on the back of the net, even though the goal hadn't gone in yet, I had a sneaking suspicion something was probably going to go amiss in the, uh, the next few seconds. And unfortunately, that was the case. St. Clair going to now drop to 3 nothing with 2 minutes 40 to play. And Barry just looks like they are living in the Saints zone, and they have no intention of moving out anytime soon. Yeah, they're going to give themselves another opportunity. Spoods is going to make the save this time by. But again, like I'm going to be curious to see what the shot clock looks like after this one. Because it just seems like shot after shot here for Barry. And these are, again, like not all necessarily like big passing plays. But they're all still so scary because the ball just seems like it stays in the crease forever. Especially these slow rollers. That's just trying to hit the flip reset. Spoods is going to be there to cut off the angle. But multiple members of the Saints unable to get a good touch on it. Now Ventrix once again going to gain control. Going to steal that corner boost as well, so they'll definitely have a chance to make a play off the ceiling. Great little uh, touch there. Going to leave it for Corrupt. Going to try to set up Nate off that back wall. Great passing play. Nate trying to get the double touch off the backboard. Not able to do so, but Barry, such a good job of cycling the ball in the offensive zone and just creating chance after chance after chance right now. Hey, even if it's not ending up with an actual shot opportunity, it's at least killing time. Yeah. And killing time in a spot that you don't have to worry about it. Like, you're not scared at the corner of the Saints zone yeah. that you're going to get scored on unless somehow Spoots gets it in his own crease, to be honest. But, like, other than that, like, there's nothing that can really go wrong here for Barry. And they've been here for, like, two minutes already. Yeah, see, two minutes to say, and it might be even more than that, say, at least for the last two minutes. But, say, St. Clair, I don't think they've gotten one shot on net. At least, I don't think they've gotten a chance, let alone a shot on net the last couple minutes, and still not going to be the case. 
pump. They're gonna have to stay. And one thing with St. Clair now, now you're gonna have to start to take chances. You're down 3-0, you're in game three, or you're down two nothing. So even though you don't want to leave that net open now, you have six, you have 72 seconds to play, you have to try to force something for Barry. Just, they will not let go of this ball. They have total control right now. I, w I wish there was a time of possession stat in Rocket League because I, I, I guarantee Barry would be in, in the four minute plus range by the end of this game. It definitely seems that way. Because just anytime we're talking about it, it's off of the bumper of one of the Barry University players. And talking about a Saints player, it's like, or just a clearing attempt at best. And you usually get stopped right outside the crease. So we see another opportunity and another one here. That's going to be goal number two here for Nate to put the four goal marker now onto this game. Saints, unfortunately, look like they've been down. Yeah, it's a, it'll be merely a formality these last 45 seconds, barring some kind of crazy comeback or crazy collapse that we've never seen before. And say, and even then, the Saints would still have to win two more games. So just to get out of game three here, they got to climb Mount Everest. But it looks more than likely that they will be heading down to the loser's bracket. And it definitely oh. will be the case. Ventrick's going to add one more and make this one 5 nothing for the time being. So Barry definitely not done playing with St. Clair yet. And St. Clair just getting ready to go to losers now. And I'm taking a look at this bracket. And they made things interesting, to say the least, here. We'll get to it a little bit later. We still have 40 seconds left to go. But uh, we got, uh, like you are saying, this one's not completely over. But like I said, a formality was a nice way to Dinner's play. Dinner's done, you're just waiting for the bill. Yeah, basically, unfortunately. Just the uh, her university, once again, having the Saints number, but always oh. excellent. What a move by Nate. Gonna try to find one more fancy goal. Barry still trying to pile it on. Uh -oh. Corrupt somehow getting the angle off the left wall. Off the assist from Nate and Barry trying to put a Brazil up on St. Clair. Gonna put up six goals now in game three. Just what a shot by Corrupt. None of the Saints could have possibly expected that angle coming there. And just absolute domination in game three. Barry gonna roll through and continue their upper bracket run in the CCA East playoffs. Yeah, so they're gonna go get the goal against what would be St. Clair Saints Green, but I'm again not 100% sure if they're actually competing here tonight. And if that's not the case, they'd be going up against Bruce Parker. That's all the way from 125. So honestly, congratulations to Barry University, a very, very fine and like dominant, dominant yeah. showing, <laughs> especially in that last one. But uh a tough time indeed here for the Saints. Definitely have to regroup before they fall down to the lower bracket. Yeah. And what I was kind of touching on as I was like stuttering like a madman <laughs> talking about the bracket, but uh, they don't actually flip which side you're on in this uh, bracket. So right now, there's a chance that we could have to play Kennesaw again. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it depends here because like, Kennesaw and King Flame, they just played each other. Yeah. Kind of saw one three zero, so they move forward, and then on the bracket says loser of I, so that would be on the opposite side. But Seton Hall, which would definitely be terrifying in its yeah, own right, yeah. And Rochester, which is absolutely no slouches either. Yeah, the top and, of that bracket is. Yeah, so going to have to take a look. The next match is technically scheduled for eight forty five. Wait a second, that was like a half hour ago. So, uh, <laughs> needless to say, that. Uh, CC Summer Series had a, a little bit of uh, an inkling that there might have been more three O's in the yeah. this first <laughs> round. Because, I mean, seeing the first rounds, I would have expected three O's as well, to be honest. But uh, definitely not the way it went here today. Yeah, I'd say it's uh, almost as possibly long. And then I think, yeah, we had the five, ten minutes between the first, like the start of the game as well, with the teams getting ready in the lobby and everything like that. So. CCA in typical fashion, 25, 30 minutes behind, but say Saints Gold still going to try to make that loser, whether it'll be, say, Kennesaw or it'll be Seton Hall or someone. The top of that bracket is just terrifying, so any of those teams going to fall down, definitely going to have their work cut out for them. Okay, so Seton Hall did end up winning that game, it looks like now here, so it's going to be Rochester University versus Seton Hall, and then we, or not Seton Hall, Rochester University versus Kennesaw yeah. State University, not Seton Hall. Um, then the winner plays us, and... I would imagine since that bracket match just got moved down that that last match must have just ended, which means we may have ourselves about 20 minutes or so before our next matchup. So if there's any opportunity to go get a late night snack or like a late night dinner or something, now is your opportunity. But before we do throw ourselves to a very, very quick break here, any last thoughts on that match? Yeah, just 
they kind of fell apart there at the end. Say the Saints would say you can't always rely on the, the 2 0 comeback. Barry just looked by game three, they just looked like they had the Saints number. Saints couldn't really get off the ground and get the ball out of their own zone. I think Barry probably had four minutes time on attack. So they just got to find some way. The counter attack was really strong early in these earlier series and they won. So just got to find some way when you're getting pressured like that to find those breakout goals and at least like start to get some chinks in the armor because Barry, yeah. it was just all out of salt. Yeah, like there was absolutely no time for offense like at all there for the Saints that time by which was definitely tough to, to deal with. But, of course, their tournament round, their playoff run, not done just yet. It'll be a couple minutes where we are going to take ourselves a little break, quickly rejuvenate ourselves, and get back in here for what would be lower bracket round three. Stay tuned.